We recorded a story last week about our treasured wildlife here on Delmarva and how important it is to protect those populations. That interview did not air because part of the show was preempted by CBS News. So today, we're trying again. Well, we probably don't have to tell you about the vast wildlife population on Delmarva. We were talking about it at the beginning of the show, <laughs> yeah. from the ponies to the fish and everything in between the Delmarva sand and sky. And, of course, we treasure each and every unique creature, which is why there are groups here on Delmarva that work to protect those animals, particularly this time of year. Here today to explain is Dave Wilson. He's with the Audubon, Maryland, D.C.'s Important Bird Area Program. Thank you so much for joining us. Dave. My Good pleasure. My here. pleasure. Okay, so we're talking specifically here about colonial nesting birds. We have a few of those around here. We do. Uh, and the fact is that they're really rare birds as well. So uh, in the coastal bays behind Ocean City and Assateague, we have about five islands that have these really rare and unfortunately declining birds trying to nest on them. But it's also in an area where you have 300,000 people also uh, kind of boating and doing all kinds of great outdoor activities. And so uh, we work to, to try to help educate folks about, about these birds. Now backing up a little bit, colonial yeah. nesting birds, what exactly are they? What does that mean? Yeah, so these are birds um, that nest together in groups. Mm -hmm. We usually think of birds like robins and other things that have their own nest in a tree. Those are, those are individuals. But colonial nesting birds nest together because really there's safety in numbers. And so these birds, when they're out in an island, there's a predator. One sees it, they can all you know, take note. Uh, and usually, you know, the mass numbers help protect individuals. So you said the numbers are declining. Yeah, that's right. Uh, some birds in particular, like black skimmers, royal terns, and common terns have declined anywhere from 65 to about 85% in the last couple decades. Well, let me ask you this, Dave, and this is kind of a tough question to ask, but, you know, isn't that just the cycle of life? Some birds are simply going to go away? Well, over millions of years, yes, but over decades, because of the acceleration of, of sea level issues we have in the coastal bays and also the number of boaters and the changes in the area because of all of the construction and changes in tides and the Ocean City, permanent Ocean City Inlet, it's really done a number on some of these birds that would otherwise be doing fine without some of, you know, the things that we do in nature. Ah. Yeah, so it's really, there's a lot we can do to help them. And then you talk about Ocean City, the little islands in the, in the Isle of Wight. Yeah, and so the Corps of Engineers uh, about uh, four years ago now created some new islands in the coastal bays uh, when they dredged the inlet. They, they dredged the Sinopuxin Inlet and the Ocean City Inlet. Um, and those islands uh, helped, number one, save taxpayer dollars because the spoil didn't have to be sent off to the landfill. Uh, but also created, helped to create these new islands in the coastal bays for these rapidly declining birds. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the black skimmer. Tell us more about the black skimmer. Yeah, black skimmers are really a unique bird, very sort of a turn-like bird, a very large orange and black bill. Uh, they go through the water once, usually in groups of three or four. Yeah. They make a little line in the water. It causes small fish to come up and see what's going on. Then they turn around. They come back the other way with their bill halfway in the water and they snatch. And they as get soon the as they fish. feel something on that lower mandible, they grab a hold. So it's quite an adaptation. Wow, really. that's pretty yeah. interesting. Okay, and then the royal tern. Yeah, royal tern is a beautiful large tern. And most people know about gulls. There's, there's four mm -hmm. or five different mm -hmm. gulls we have in, in the region. Uh, royal terns have a really large orange beak and have kind of a little bit of a royal tuft. You know, yeah. they have a sort of a royal majestic looking bird. Uh, and those birds are one of the, those birds have declined 80 plus percent over the past wow. couple decades because of the loss of, of island habitat and disturbances on these islands. So what can we do to help preserve them? Well, you know, the Corps of Engineers has done a great job of, of helping to protect these islands. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources under uh, Larry Hogan's leadership has done some, some great work. Uh, really what we need folks to do is simply stay off the islands from about mid-April through late August and let these birds uh, do their thing. Because once you're on the island, they take off, the eggs end up baking in the sun. Other birds eat those eggs within seconds a lot of times. And so we just need folks to, to stay off those those three or four islands during the midsummer. And there's signage on these islands to tell you so, so, you know. Yeah, most of the islands are posted. The good news for, for boaters, and I'm a boater, I'm a fisherman, I, I'd love to spend my whole life fishing every day, every second of the day. Uh, but the good news is for folks who, who are out there on boats and want to get some sort of island time is that in the coastal bays there's a lot of sand available that these birds aren't nesting on that is underwater at high tide. So there's about eight of the 12 hours of tide where you have 
islands everywhere that are underwater during during the high tide. It's fine to to to, uh, to recreate on those because birds can't nest on those. There you go. All right. Yeah. So we talk birds. Let's talk terrapins for a little bit. Yeah. Tell us about the terrapins. Yeah, terrapins. Uh, you know, the, the Maryland Department of, of Natural Resources again is doing a good job of 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 continuing their survey, which has been going on for. I think more than a decade now in the coastal bays in particular, again, the, the bays behind Ocean City and Assateague. And we just were out uh, two weeks ago doing their annual survey. Uh, I was in Newport Bay. Uh, the, the volunteers for the Maryland Coastal Bays program go in all of the embayments behind Ocean City and Assateague. And I think they had over 150 terrapins in a variety of sites. They tend to be bunched in groups. Uh, they have they struggle a little bit behind Ocean City, as you might guess. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger numbers down where you have more protected and open space. Um, and they also have issues with crab pots getting stuck and drowning in crab and pots. And we actually but, have a picture uh, yeah. of, a, of a terrapin with a barnacle on yeah, it. Yeah, barnacles, terrapins are slow enough, just oh, wow. like a lot of so similar to sea turtles, um, that barnacles will grow in their shells. <laughs> uh, and sometimes their shell will grow right around those barnacles. And so That's it's kind of neat. And if you see these big, the big females in the summer, you know, they're out laying eggs. And uh, so the juveniles will either hatch in the fall and some will actually overwinter and hatch in the spring. Just depends on the batch of eggs. Don't mess with them. Don't, don't mess with terrapins. They will bite if you put your finger in front of their face. Otherwise, they're, they're nice creatures. I'm not going to. Yeah. You're not going to do <laughs> that? No, I'm not gonna I do that, too. <laughs> are you a terrapin? Oh, yes, you are. So is there anything else that you would yeah. like to share with us that we as people in general need to try to do that we can do to help preserve the the wildlife. Yeah, well, in terms of colonial nesting birds, you know, really sort of give them space, respect their space on the island, keep yourself off the island and your dogs off the island. Mm. Dogs are often a big, a big issue. And uh, remember that, you know, we're, we're, we just want to recreate and have fun. It's just folly for us, but for them, you know, it's really a matter of life and death. And so if we want to see these sort of iconic Ocean City, Assateague bird species survive, we just need to give them a little space. Matter of life we'll and death. Do. Boy, when you put it that way. Yeah. Dave, thank you. Dave, yeah, Wilson, appreciate it. thank you so much. And if you would like to read more about what Dave discussed, go to delmarvalife.com.